So in the previous video, we talked about how evolution can happen through natural selection. And we also have to see now how mutation would lead to evolution as well. But in this particular topic, I am going to talk about how mutation in tandem with natural selection could lead to evolution. Now, what I mean by this is, I mean that sometimes evolution can happen just by natural selection by itself, but in other cases, mutation could also work together with natural selection in order to lead to evolution of a species. So without wasting time, let's actually see how that works out. Now, I'm going to give you a situation over here. You don't need to memorize it. In this particular image, you have an island surrounded by a body of water, obviously. And on the island, there is a particular species of fruit fly. And all the fruit flies on that island have a genotype of homozygous dominant, large B, large B. So obviously, if all the fruit flies on this island have a genotype of large B, large B, the allele frequency of large B is 100% because there are no other alleles for this particular gene. There are no other alleles for this particular gene. Now, what happens then is, after a few generations, however, we notice something rather peculiar. We notice that on the island, the fruit flies now have three different types of genotype. They can be homozygous dominant, large B, large B, heterozygous, large B, small b, or homozygous recessive, small b, small b. And we also notice something quite peculiar where the allele frequencies have also changed. Because in the earlier population, the allele frequency was large B at 100%, but after a few generations or after some time had passed, the allele frequency right now in the current island, in the current population, has uh, large B at 40% and small B at 60%. So the first question we have to ask is, where did the small b allele come from suddenly? Because in the earlier population, there were only large b, large b alleles. None of the fruit flies had small b. And number two, why is the allele frequency changing in the sense that why is the small b allele frequency increasing and the large b allele frequency decreasing? So, to answer this question, we might have to suggest a reason for this. So in the original population, I'm going to also add some extra information that were not added earlier. So on the island, there are particular fruits that are toxic to the fruit flies, which means to say that if the fruit flies were to eat these fruits, they may die. But the fruit flies do not just eat that particular fruits, they also eat other types of fruits as well. And also, I told you that in the original population, they were large B, large B, homozygous dominant, and they were not resistant to the toxin, which means to say that if any fruit flies attempted to eat that particular fruit, they would die. Now, what might have happened on this island here is as follows. So you see, yes, all the fruit flies on the island were in the beginning only homozygous dominant. So if they had reproduced due to overproduction, they would have only obtained large B, large B offsprings, homozygous dominant offsprings. However, if you notice over there in one of the fruit flies, what do you notice? Instead of it being large B, large B, homozygous dominant, there is a small b that has appeared out of nowhere. A new allele has appeared. Now, how did that new allele appear? That new allele would have obviously appeared due to mutation. Now, coincidentally, due to that mutated allele, which is small b, that small b allele makes the fruit fly resistant to the toxin. Now, due to overproduction, due to genetic variation, random assortment, due to crossover of the chromosomes, due to random mating and random fusion of gametes, you would have now gotten different varieties of genotypes. You would have gotten large B, large B, large B, small Bs, and small B, small B genotypes in the future generation. Now, in this case here, the fruit 
toxin acts as a selection pressure because the food toxin is the factor that will influence which flies will survive and which flies will die. So some of the flies that ate the toxins, not all, remember I told you, not all the flies ate the to uh, fruits, but if any flies ate the fruits and if they are homozygous dominant, large B, large B, or heterozygous, large B, small B, they would die because they are not resistant to it, all right? And obviously, would the small B, small B flies die in this case? No, the small B, small B flies would not have died. Now, if you notice over here, you would also notice something rather odd because some of my students will ask me the question. They'll say, teacher, this fly is large B, large B, and these flies are large B, small B, so they should have died as well. Why didn't they die? Um, in this case, we just take it into assumption that these flies did not eat the fruits. They might have not, you know, they might have just eaten other fruits. But the point I'm just trying to make here is the fruit toxins, the toxins in the fruit will act as a selection pressure and kill off most of the flies that are not resistant. And it will increase the chances of the resistant flies to survive and reproduce. And when the resistant flies survive and reproduce, they have a higher chance of passing down their alleles to the next generation. So in this case over here, more flies in the future generation become homozygous recessive, okay? And more flies will also have the small b allele. In this case, eventually it will lead to the change in the allele frequency because the fruit toxin will favor the small b resistant allele and it will act against the large b allele which is the non-resistant allele so that is what causes the allele frequency to change over a period of time so to answer the earlier question where did the small b allele come from that came from mutation and coincidentally it produced a resistant allele why did the allele frequency change in the sense that small b allele frequency was increasing and large b allele frequency was decreasing was because the fruit toxin on the island acts as the selection pressure that favored small b over large b so the resistant flies will survive and reproduce and pass down the advantageous alleles to the next generation now an actual example of how this plays out is when we talk about antibiotic resistance in bacteria. In AS chapter 10, I told you that antibiotics are just these chemicals that are able to destroy or kill bacteria through various ways. And one of the examples that we saw was penicillin. So that was in that was in chapter 10 of AS. Now, antibiotic resistance is what happens when the antibiotics are no longer effectively able to kill the bacteria. So, how exactly does that happen though? And how does mutation and natural selection actually cause more antibiotic resistance bacteria, resistant bacteria to survive and increase in the population? Now, remember, same thing like how we talked about the fruit flies earlier. We start off with a population. This is just my example, by the way. So we can start off with a population of soil bacteria. Soil bacteria just means, you know, the bacteria are surviving in the soil. You know, there's a lot of bacteria in the soil. That's normal. Okay. Now, all these bacteria, incidentally, are non-resistant. Right. So if I put those bacteria as black colored dots, all of them are non-resistant, which means to say, if you give them antibiotics, they will all die. Now, what may happen is, randomly one day, it is an unavoidable process, one of the bacteria mutated. Remember, it is a random process. Mutation is a random process. So, we cannot predict when a mutation is going to happen or not going to happen. But coincidentally, because one of the bacteria mutated, it developed a gene which makes it antibiotic resistant. So, out of the entire population of bacteria, most of them were non-resistant, represented by those black dots, but one of them right there is resistant to antibiotics. Now, one of my favorite questions to ask my students is, what will the future generation of the bacteria look like? Immediately, most of my students will say that, oh, it's very simple. 
because one of the bacterium is antibiotic resistant, it will have a higher chance of survival. The antibiotic resistant goes, I can survive antibiotics, you cannot. But here's the thing. The non-resistant bacteria, the one in black, that is true, but the resistant bacteria do not have an advantage right now because there are no antibiotics in the environment. Okay, Because there are no antibiotics in the environment, neither bacteria have a higher chance of survival or death. Okay, The only reason why the red one has a higher chance of survival is if there are antibiotics in the environment. But here's the thing. The black color ones, which are non-resistant, they also outnumber the resistant bacteria because there are so many black non-resistant bacteria, but there's only one antibiotic resistant bacteria. So, because the non-resistant ones outnumber the resistant bacteria, the future generation will be as follows. Eventually, the, the antibiotic resistant bacteria may not be able to survive and outcompete the non-resistant ones. All right? Because now some students will ask me why. Because look at this case right here. Between these two bacteria, which bacterium has a higher chance of survival? The answer is none. Both of them have an equal chance of survival because there are no selection pressures that will kill off the non-resistant ones and favor the resistant ones right here. However, the conditions change if you're the farmer and you have cows and you inject your cows with a lot of antibiotics because now you might want to ask the question, why do farmers inject their animals with antibiotics? The main reason is they want to inject their animals with antibiotics because uh, when we do a lot of farming, especially in mass farming or large scale farming, animals are put in cramped conditions and it will increase their chances of developing infectious diseases such as bacterial infection so to prevent that from happening farmers will inject their animals with antibiotics in anticipation for those infections and also to prevent those animals from getting sick the problem with that is because the antibiotic concentration is quite high the cows in this case will pee out the antibiotics into the soil here's where it becomes interesting now there are antibiotics inside the soil the antibiotics will act as a selection pressure. So remember, the antibiotic resistant bacteria will say, I can survive antibiotics. You cannot. And the non-resistant one would say, that is true. They are not saying it to each other, by the way, and bacteria can't talk. But the non-resistant ones will say, that is true, but there are no antibiotics. But in this case, are you sure? Antibiotics are present in the soil. So the antibiotics will act as a selection pressure. And because the antibiotics act as a selection pressure in this case, what will happen? It will kill off all the non-resistant bacteria and the resistant bacteria will survive and reproduce. And when they reproduce, the future population will all be resistant and there will be a change in the allele frequencies. Because if we say that the non-resistant is one allele and the resistant antibiotic resistance is another allele, we can assume that the resistant allele frequency will increase. So this is how mutation works in tandem with natural selection to lead to evolution. So the first thing that happens is a random mutation to create a new allele. In this case, the new allele makes the bacteria resistant. The second thing is it needs a selection pressure. The selection pressure here just means that the antibiotics are present and the antibiotics will eradicate all the non-resistant bacteria. And when it eradicates all the non-resistant bacteria, only the resistant one survives. And when they reproduce, they will pass down the advantageous allele, which is the resistant allele to the future generation, causing a change in allele frequencies. So I hope you understand how mutation together with natural selection could also lead to an evolution of the species.